Hello, N4H&H &H here with the Yaesu FTDX 5000 MP. Uh, what I want to talk to you about in this video is the SM5000 station monitor that's sitting atop the radio here. Uh, this is the matching station monitor for the FTDX 5000, and it has uh, speakers left and right, so if you're using VFO A and B to, to have your simultaneous dual receive, you will hear what's in VFO A on the left and VFO B on the right. If you're not doing simultaneous dual receive, then you get the same signal, uh, same audio on both speakers. And then in the middle, you have a band scope. I have shot other videos about this, how to set up the audio tapering, how to work with um, uh, the band scope. But what I haven't gotten into is this mode here, which is called LBWS. And uh, so I wanted to show you over here on the uh, uh, menu, how you how you set that. What you do is you can, you've got a lot of control there and you, what you're going to do is long press the C.S button down here. Now, um, if, if you've seen my video about the C.S button, that's a custom switch. And uh, if you tap it, it, it can be assigned to your favorite menu setting. And I go to APF Narrow. The manual shows you how to do that. Basically, you just go to your favorite menu setting. And while you, uh, while you have, after you've tapped that, and then you long press it, and it'll assign it. So from then on, you just tap it and it brings up your favorite menu setting, something that you may go to often. I'll show you a little bonus tip here. Sometimes if I'm working DX, I wanna change my transmit bandpass filter to maybe 300 to 2700 or even 400 to 2600. And what I can do is I can have the CS switch assigned to this. So I'll long press. And now when I tap it, it takes me immediately to that particular uh, setting so I can quickly change my transmit audio bandwidth for like working DX. You know, I want to thin up my audio a little bit for DX. But if you long press the CS, it goes to the setup mode for the SM5000. So you can see it over here in the OLED area. And uh, oh, well, I got to get out of that. <laughs> now long press. There we go. So look, I'm in mode LBWS-2, mode LBWS-2. So uh, you've probably seen in my other videos where I was in mode, get it back here, fix. Now look up there at the display. You see, I'm seeing from uh, 7.0 on this band to 7.250. Now when you're in fixed mode over here in the menu, you can set the span. See, it's 250, 250K, 500K. And of course, the wider you go, the less resolution you're going to get. So here's 100K. I get to see less of the band, but it's a little bit more resolution. I do normally run it at 250 because all I'm really looking at for this, I'm not really into a waterfall. And even though the FTDX10 I've got sitting here, you know, has the, the waterfall and the, the 3D spectrum scope, I, all I really want to see are blips that represent signals, okay? And as a matter of fact, I don't even want to see that noise floor. So let me show you what I do there. Uh, in fixed mode, I can do an attenuation. Let me move over here to see. There's where I set the fixed span. Now move up one ATT attenuation. Now that's right now no attenuation. Maybe I'll kick in 10 dB. Watch the scope. 20 dB. Get it down to where all I see are the signal spikes. Now bear in mind this also works in conjunction with your gain stages. And right now I'm running IP01, which is where I normally leave. Uh, it's set. I don't usually use amp one or two unless I'm on an extremely high frequency, like upper, you know, 21 megahertz or higher, and I need that extra sensitivity. And if I don't, I won't run amp one or two there. I'll just run amp one. Uh, I mean, IPO one. And, and this radio, of course, has IPO two, which is the that gives you the best cross, cross modulation characteristic. In other words, it makes the receiver reject uh, unwanted signals the best. IPO one is the next best amp one then was after that and then of course amp two is going to be the most sensitivity but it's also going to be uh, a mode that will not reject as many unwanted signals it just doesn't have the selectivity but i generally run ipo one on this rig now if i'm running ipo two like um i sometimes run that on 40 meters and below 40 60 80 um 160 then i might not attenuate quite as much, maybe 10 dB right there, see? Just enough to see the signals rising up out of the noise floor. Okay, so again, these are all pertaining to normal mode, and um, 
using the, uh, well, I say normal mode, but um, fixed mode and seeing the spectrum that you assign over here, however wide you want to see, however much spectrum you want to see. Now, also, you have some control of, uh, I'm going to put it back on IP01, the trace, whether you want normal, averaged, or peak hold. Now, I'll show you. I've, I've covered this in a video I just, before I'll, in more detail, but I'll give, give you a quick rundown here. So average is average. You see the little gray? That's just an average of the signals and noise floor as well. So if I go to amp one, you're going to see a lot more averaging going on with the noise floor riding across the bottom. That's what you're seeing there. I don't really care for that mode much, but what I do like is this option here, peak hold. Now look at peak hold and you'll see what it's going to do there is where there was a signal earlier and it may be dropped out, it'll hold a little gray there. So imagine a quiet band like say 17 meters and there's only two signals poking up in in above the noise there. And, uh, and you're down on one end of the band, you see, a, you see a spike up here and you want to move up there and then all of a sudden the guy quits transmitting. Well, it'll hold that little gray thing there so you know about where he was, which is good. Um, and so uh, that, I do like peak hold. But now, all right, so let me get back to this uh, LBWS that I want to show you. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm oh, sorry, let me pan over there. So I'm moving back down from where he set the trace peak hold. I'm going to move back down. I'm going to leave it on 10 dB attenuation. And I'm going to change the mode to LBWS1. Uh, now look, you see there how wide it is. There's LBWS2. That's what you were looking at earlier. And this is what I want you to see. There's a station transmitting there right now. And I don't want you to, let me put it back on IPO1. I'm not going to let you know who it is because I know who it is. Um, but this is lower sideband and I'm looking 4K above and below. Now, uh, let me show you how I'm doing that. I've got it set on the 25K range, center span 25K in LBWS mode two, okay? 25K, that's gonna give you a very tight resolution on the screen. You see the graduations on the screen changing? So I wanna just see plus and minus, there's 5K, 10K. So I've got it on the 25K and then back to LBWS2. If I go to LBWS3, it narrows down too much. So two, think about two, plus and minus four. So that way I can see four kilohertz above or below. So that gives me enough to see whether it's upper sideband or lower sideband. And so back over there on, let's focus on that, what we're seeing now. So, and by the way, the, the display updates a lot faster in this mode because I'm looking at a, a smaller portion of the spectrum, whereas the processor in the SM5000 is not fast enough to look at the entire band and, and be in real time. The FTDX10, FTDX101 is no problem. It's got a super fast processor and it's able to uh, update the screen very quickly. That's why I don't need averaging for it. I don't care. I run the, I use that outer dial, which I have the uh, custom switch on the 10 set so that the outer dial controls the scope sensitivity. They call level. And I always lower that to where I just, I don't see any noise. All I see are the signal spikes. And it's fast enough that you could actually read the CW in the signal spikes. You can read dits and daws. That's the FTDX10 and the FTDX101. The SM5000 is not that fast. But again, for me, I'm just looking for signal spikes. But I wanted to analyze this person's signal because I was up the band a little bit and it's a lower sideband signal. And yet up the band, I was actually hearing splatter. Seeing lower side, man, I should be seeing mostly here, not here. But when he was talking, I was getting signal here and up the band. I could tell he wasn't clean because I could hear him at 7156, and he's supposed to be lower side band. I can understand he's a little wide going down this way, but he's wide going the other way. And the LBWS2 mode will allow you to be able to see that. And again, the processor's fast enough, you're seeing it really virtually real time. So that's what I wanted you to see, those of you who have the SM5000, so that you could actually take advantage of the LBWS mode and, and see what that does for you. So if you ever want to analyze somebody, you think somebody's wide, you think they're splattering, um, then this would be the way you could do that with a Yaesu FTDX5000 MP, but you do need to have the optional SM5000 connected to be able to do that.
Of course, you know, the 5000 lends itself to uh, having an external SDR connected, and you could do it with that if you want. But this is a way to do it with just the radio and the accompanying uh, station monitor uh, that is made for the 5000. So again, I'm going to go back to the mode I normally operate in, just as a recap, so, so you can see how I get back there. Um, so right now I'm in mode LBWS2. Uh, I'm going to go back to fixed mode. You see, the, look, what's the display over here when I... See, there's LBWS3, very narrow, too narrow. And there's two, that's what I was using. And there's one, which is still pretty good, but you can see that, you know, it's, it's beginning to lag just a little bit. Not much, though. I just wanted to narrow it down to 4K because the widest this radio can hear is 4K. So uh, that's why I think LBWS2 is a good setting. All right, but I'm going to go back to mode fix, and you'll see it returns. And now, now if I rotate this knob, there's where I set my fixed span. So watch up here, and you'll see the span change. And you see how the blips get wider because I'm getting in a lower, I'm going to a lower resolution. But I, like I said, I normally run 250. For, and by the way, that is per band. So if I if I'm gonna if I go to a 14 megahertz, I can set this all over again just for 14 megahertz. So I'm not stuck with 250 on every band. Be, just be aware of that. If I if I go out of here and I go back to and I go to 20 meters, then I can go through here and I can set a different span for 20 meters, which is very convenient. You can set a different span for every band. And then again, I've got the attenuation set because I typically run IP01. And I typically, and I don't want to see, see, I don't want to see that band across the bottom, this noise. I only want to see signal spikes. And you could even argue maybe that 20 is a better setting there. See? All right. And again, but I do like peak hold. So you see the peak hold is, is, is showing up there, the little gray spots that are holding. And then um, there's where I set peak hold trace. So again, you got trace could be peak hold, average, or normal. Normal, you just see the spikes going up and down. And I can tell you, those spikes that are moving up and down are lagging behind the actual signal, you know, a, a millisecond or, well, a few milliseconds, um, whereas it's more instantaneous in that LBWS mode. So, again, uh, then there's average, which is not my favorite, and then there's peak hold, which is my favorite. Again, peak hold comes in handy because I can see a signal. When it goes away, it holds a little gray area, and I know to move my, see, as you rotate the VFO, you're going to see that thing move, see it? So I'll know where that signal was so I can go find it. All right. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. I want to thank the Patreon team who help make these videos possible. And uh, we ha well, have some new, new Patreons. I need to do a video and just go through the list. I think I'll do that in the future of uh, new Patreons. I'd normally do a shout out for the VIP Patreons. And... Um, uh, because, you know, they're they're making quite a commitment to the channel every month, and I certainly do appreciate all Patreons, and, uh, but i got to say, especially the VIPs, you know, and the VIPs, the executives and VIPs get some perks um, that are available to them. I've mentioned it in other videos, you know, downloads of, of my menu setup for this rig, the 891, 991A, and the FTDX10. I cover the menu optimizations I make, function menu knobs and how I use them, what they're for, and how I combine different ones to do wonderful things. And that's available for the executive and VIP Patreons. And then the VIP Patreons have another little perk that they find out when they when they uh, sign up as a VIP. So I do want to thank the Patreon team for helping me bring these videos to you. And if, if uh, you'd like to join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH, my call sign. I'll put that at the bottom of the screen here, patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. If you would, please do me a favor and click that like button, you know, smash that thumbs up. That does a world of good for the channel, and I'm only getting about 8 to 10% likes. That means that maybe you don't like this type of content. Well, if that's the case, I'll, I guess I can just quit doing it. If you're not liking the videos, that's telling me that you're these are not the kind of videos you want to see. So I need to know that because I don't want my Patreons wasting their support every month if, if these aren't the kind of videos you want me to continue to make. Uh, so please do click that like button. And if you would consider subscribing to the channel, if you do subscribe, be sure to click that notification bell and you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video, which is generally one a week, sometimes two a week. Hey, thanks again for watching and 73 from N4 H&H.